everyone, I'm Chenille. I'm a nurse practitioner here at Titan Medical Center. Just wanna kinda of touch base with you today and let you know why female hormones are so important to be evaluated and monitored, especially if you're experiencing symptoms that you may not really understand or um, see how it can be affected by hormones in the body. So hormones do play a very important role in the way that you're feeling and they do all kind of work together um, in conjunction to help regulate and balance each other within the body. So many times patients just feel really tired, weighed down, bloated, fatigued, have low sex drive or libido, and they just kind of think maybe it's stress related or something going on. And oftentimes, sure, it could be, but other times it's not. And you don't always know that unless you get your hormones evaluated to see what's really going on within the body. Certainly other medical conditions can also play a role in regulation and balance of these hormones, um, which you may not even be aware is taking place in the body. Um, so the best thing that you can do is to check your hormones, let us know how you're feeling, and see how we can help. What's up guys, John here with Big Drew, and we're gonna go over five tips to help you guys get stronger and not get hurt in the gym every time. These tips and tricks me and Drew use, and they're gonna set you up for long-term success and results with keeping you healthy and strong. The first one, hydrate. Yes, definitely wanna hydrate, guys. The muscle is made mostly of water, as everybody, well, not everybody knows, but if you guys don't know, the muscle is made up of a lot of water. So you, if, the, if there's not water in there, that's how it tears, which I've done. Absolutely. I've torn both biceps. <laughs> um, but you wanna make sure you're hydrated when you go in the gym. You wanna make sure the muscle is basically lubricated so when you're lifting heavy, it doesn't tear. Yeah. I'm trying to compare it to like maybe a piece of paper. If a piece of paper is bone dry, it just tears easy. If it's wet, it's a little bit harder to tear. The muscle's the same way. So you wanna keep your body hydrated and also it's gonna help you from getting dizzy. It's yeah. gonna help you from cramping yeah. and it's also gonna help you, you know, feel better. If you, if you sweat a lot, you also wanna to hydrate too. So I'll always, always stay hydrated. And don't just hydrate at the gym. Yep. A lot of times people don't drink enough, they bring a gallon of water to the gym, they chug that gallon at the gym. That's actually worse because their body's not used to the water, so when right. they take it in, they're just gonna put, piss it right back out. Right. So what you wanna do is hydrate the night before, hydrate throughout the day, so that way the next day you go to the gym, you can still continue to sip your water, but it's actually gonna affect you, and it's yep. not just gonna be chugging water. Yep. You wanna continuously drink water the same way you continuously have your meals. Yep. You guys know meals every two to three hours, have water every 30 minutes to an hour. If you don't have time for it, set the reminder on your phone. Yep. If you drink one bottle of water every hour, you're over a gallon of water every day. Absolutely. So it's really not that hard to get your water in. Just make sure you drink eight bottles of water a day, which is a gallon, yep. and you won't have that muscle tear. Absolutely, so like Drew was talking about, so not only is the muscle mainly consistent of water, but the body's over 70% of water. That's right, so your body is basically made up of a lot of water. Your yeah. blood, <laughs> everything that goes into it is water-based, so water's, it's essential for your hydration and for your health, along with getting results. And not only just helping you hydrate, but it's also gonna help flush toxins out through the day, especially when you're working out and you're sweating right. and you're getting all these toxins out of your body. You gotta replenish those fluids so it's key so you don't dehydrate and you don't end up hurt in the hospital right. or, or just not looking good because even your vascularity can depend on the amount of water that you're continuously pushing through your body at that point. So right. stay hydrated. Yes. It's essential for your body, essential for your health, and great for your workouts. The second one, stretch and warm up before you start. Yes. So I think, you know, the older that me and Drew get, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the more that we have to stretch and warm up to make yeah. sure that our bodies are ready to definitely take on the progressive <laughs> load or weight that yeah. we're going to push or the strain that we're going to push on our body yeah. without hurting ourselves. Yeah. So I definitely stretch, definitely warm up. If you don't, if you don't like to stretch, because there's a thing where stretching fatigues the muscle, and a lot of people don't want to stretch too much because they feel it fatigues the muscles, they can't lift as much or do as much volume or mm -hmm. whatever they're trying to do, mm -hmm. then do a warm up. Right. If you're doing legs, get on the bike, walk, do something. Don't just go right into your workout from a, uh, sitting at a desk all day or yeah. even if you're walking around all day, you're not walking around in the gym. So you're not doing the same movements in the gym as you're doing throughout the rest of your day. So you wanna warm up those movements to get them ready. Right. So even if you're squatting, just do some body weight, body weight warm ups. You don't have to necessarily put your legs behind your head like a yoga instructor, yeah. <laughs> but you wanna just make sure you get blood in the muscle. You wanna make sure everything is lubricated and going that way you're not gonna have, you know, the tears and all that stuff yep. too. Tears, so if you don't injury. stretch, warm up. If you don't warm up, stretch. Yep. But if you don't do it, if you do both of them, it's even better. Yes. But yes. um, do definitely do one of the two, otherwise, 
it's only a matter of time for something pops and you can't look good and you can't train and it's a whole nother issue and then it never gets back. You know, Absolutely, so it's, it's a big part of your workout and for you to get a healthy workout without having any injuries. Obviously stretching, especially when you get older and stuff like that, you're gonna feel like your joints might be hurting you more, they might be a lot more tighter, muscles, ACLs, all these different things uh, go right along with stretching and warming up. Whether it's just stretching, you know, your if you're doing chest and you're doing your shoulders or your legs or whatever it may be, getting the blood flowing. That's the old yeah. term that we used to use. Uh, at that point, you're getting the blood, you're getting everything stretched out. Um, so it's not gonna be real tight. So if you go in there and you do have a pretty stressful, you know, like session or, or, yeah. or set, um, you don't hurt yourself on the way up or anything like that. You don't feel pops, you don't, you know, hurt shoulders, knees, joint areas. Because like you said, once you get hurt, mm. it's gonna start putting you behind, the, you know, the eight ball at that point. And then you have to work your way up just to where you're at now, just to get ahead and start progressing again. And mentally, it will basically, you'll be screwed. Yes. Because yes. you're not gonna be able to go to the gym. You're gonna yeah. wanna go to the gym. Still Everything else good. in your body is gonna be working fine with that one muscle yeah. group, yeah. and you can't work out. You don't wanna be lopsided, so you can't just work out one side. Absolutely. It's not worth it, guys. No, it definitely isn't. And you know, it, it's it's true what they say that you know everything is connected. So if you hurt, let's say your shoulder, you're not going to be able to do bicep curls, or it might hurt you. Shoulder lifts, bench press, and all these different things. So everything's connected. So make sure you guys realize that, and you guys are doing proper stretching or warm ups, okay, before you work out. Number three, don't go the heaviest right when you get in the gym. Don't be egotistical. Yeah. Okay, I think we've all been there. Yeah, um, I used to be. I used yeah. to be that guy. Like I used to be that guy who goes to the gym videos. like peak hours, 6.30, and yep. throw 4 or 5 or 3.15 in my first set and just watch people. <laughs> Now I could do it, but I'm yeah. going to be, you know, injured. I'm going to have, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's not the same. Yeah. It's not Work the same. smarter, not harder, basically, yeah. at this point. You know, go in there and you don't have to lift the heaviest in the gym. Make sure your form is correct. Yeah. Make sure you're getting the right amount of reps in your set. Mm -hmm. And that could be, you know, depending on what you are or where you're at, right. it could be a lot more, a lot less. Just make yeah. sure that you're getting that proper uh, workout in without going the heaviest and being egotistical of girls around or whatever. Yeah, guys yeah, around, yeah. Whatever yeah. It is. That's exactly what it is, too. Yeah. You know, you got, when you go into the gym, if you have, if, say, if, if you got to have a game plan too so exactly. when you go in the gym when you have a game plan that I'm gonna work out shoulders or I'm not even that say if you have a game plan I'm gonna work out legs and then you go in there and you see everybody on the bench yeah you see everybody crowd around you see guys lifting heavyweight you see people impressed with the heavyweight yeah. and you know you could warm up with that weight yeah so if you don't if you don't stick to the game plan you went in there to train legs and then now all of a sudden your ego is kicking in you want to go over there just to show off and get injured, yeah. you know, you gotta, you gotta stick to what you're normally supposed to be doing. Don't just do it because there's a crowd of people. Wait for the crowd of people if you're a powerlifter at the event, or if you're a bodybuilder at the show, or if it's spring break and you wanna show off your body, or if it's vacation with the wife and kids and you wanna show off for the pictures. Yeah. Wait for that to, yeah. to show up. Don't just randomly do it no. for the gym with just a bunch of heads Strangers. you don't really even know. Yeah, yeah. for an IG pic or something <laughs> like that, you know? Not worth it. So that's number four, having a game plan. Yes. And having a game plan right when you walk in there or having a game plan beforehand, knowing what you're gonna hit as far as body part wise, mm -hmm. how many sets possibly, knowing what you're gonna do right going in there, not just going in there and, and going off the seat of your pants or flying off the seat of your pants. Now, once you get more experience this season, I, I think, you know, if you got an extra time to go in there, you're like, listen, I'm just gonna go hit the gym. Yeah. You can go in there and you can start hitting it and maybe do that. Mm -hmm. But right off the bat, when you're really trying to get somewhere, have a game yeah. plan. It's like, it's like using a roadmap, right? Mm -hmm. Or having those directions beforehand of where you're gonna go you know exactly how you're going to get there and you're laying out each step yeah. Yeah. Um, you know now you can take this in your, your brain as far as remembering of what you're doing or you have to write it down that's fine yeah. and, we have, and if you guys don't have a game plan we have one now we right. have the Titan Fitness right. program done. we have the game plan so if you guys don't want to come up with it yourself yep. get our game plan yep. take it and then use the other four things we're giving you and go to work out and exactly and exactly we will give you the lowdown on exactly what mm -hmm. you should be doing when you should be doing it so you can always have us there for help Next one, fifth and final one, progressive load to get stronger, all right? So we talked about you know staying healthy, not getting hurt in the gym, and getting stronger. How do you do this? So it's progressive overload. That means that you're working up more weight every time that you go in there, um, and it's specific, and it don't have to be a lot of weight. So right, a lot of right. people think that, listen, I gotta go up 50 pounds, 100 pounds, or whatever it is, um, mm. you know, next time I go in there, because I'm just trying to get stronger and faster. Mm. You know, we know that muscles get stronger faster than ligaments and tendons and stuff like that. So you have to progressively get everything stronger and be yes. on the same level. Yes, you, you don't know? want to just, and you don't want to just get into, um, if you're trying to get stronger, don't just do more reps with the same weight. So right. a, lot of, a lot of people go in, oh, I bench this amount of time. I can bench this weight for 10 reps. Right. My goal is to get it to 15 reps. If you're trying to get stronger, increase right. the weight. Right. Keep the rep range the same. So right. don't just, I mean, I, I've fallen victim to that too. Yep. Um, but you want to make sure that you, uh, 
if you want to get stronger, don't just increase your reps. A lot right. of, I see that a lot of times. A lot of guys like, yeah, I used to be able to, um, your stamina might be better. Absolutely. It doesn't mean you're stronger. Absolutely. It might be the heart kicking a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. But it doesn't mean you're stronger. So, I mean, you may have more stamina, but if you actually want to push more weight one time, yep. you know, you got to get the weight. Even if it's the little 2.5, the little girly 2.5 exactly. you see, exactly. throw that on there. Throw a five pound on there. I mean, yeah. who cares? Like, you're getting stronger. You're, yeah. you're adding it's more weight on. Anything in life you want to progress. So why not just do it in the gym with your weights? 100%. Because if you stay at the exact same weight and you're doing the exact same sets and stuff like that, like he's talking about, you're going to stay at that same weight and you're not going to get any stronger. You're going to be great. You're going to be maintained, yeah. um, but you're not going to keep going up and progressing. And if you want the mirror to change, that's probably not going to change that much either. Right. So you right. know, always want to progress. You always want to do better. Anything, anything you do, even anything. with your diet, with your, with your parenting, with the, anything you want to do, you yeah. want to get better. So why not do it the same, the same, if you go to work every single day, if you work in the same job, making the same hourly wage or same salary, if you get mm -hmm. salary, if you had to, why would you, a lot of people go to the gym and I see these guys go to the gym and they go in there, they'll, you know, they'll do squats three sets of 10, bench three sets of 10 and leave. They've been doing that for five, six years. Right. If I asked them if they made the same amount of money five, six years ago, they'd laugh at me, yeah. but they're doing the same thing at the gym. So why not switch it up? Yeah. You know, it's got, you got to get better in life. I'm never going backwards. I promise you that. Absolutely. They're, they're expecting different results and doing the exact same thing. Yeah. And the definition of that is insanity. If you do the exact same thing over and over and over and expect a different result, that's insanity. Yes. So don't go insane. You know what you're supposed to do, do it, okay? Yes. If you're going in there and you're putting the work, why not get a benefit out of it, all right? I, I do see this a lot too, like you were talking about. You see the exact same people in there doing the exact same thing. They're very consistent, yeah. being in there three or four days. And, and they're they, in shape too. I mean, they, they're, they their body is great. Though. But they look exactly the same. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So at that point, you want to change. You want to get a good change, and this is how to do it. Yeah. So these are just five tips and tricks that me and Drew came up with for you guys to stay healthy, stay strong, right, and not get hurt in the gym. That's it. Hydrate, stretch, warm up. Don't go heavy. Game plan, and make sure you have a progressive overload. Five tips. Let's go. Also, 2 p.m. Tight lifestyle Friday. Let's go. Hey guys, John from Titan here. I want to talk to you today about 8CG. Get a lot of questions about 8CG. Get a lot of questions like, hey, is it good for weight loss? Can it help me with fertility issues? The answer is yes to both. Um, we use it for a couple different things here at Titan Medical Center. Our doctors and providers have different protocols and regimens for different type of people doing different type of things. Um, HCG is mainly used for fertility, okay, um, as far as FDA approval and stuff like that. It's not really approved for weight loss. Um, there's a lot of research and a lot of doctors out there that use it for weight loss portions and you sign off on an off-label use. Um, we use it for add back therapy here to patients that are on testosterone replacement therapy. We want to make sure the testicles don't go through shrinkage and don't get low semen production. The way the HCG does work is, is that it mimics the LH, the luteinizing hormone. Um, it mimics that and basically it produces the signal that goes down into a male into their testes and helps them produce more testosterone naturally. Um, for women, HCG, high levels of HCG are usually common in pregnant women. Usually they test an HCG qualitative and quantitative and if those levels are higher at a certain point, they can tell how long the woman's been pregnant and if she is pregnant for sure. So when they do that at home test and they pee on the stick and at that point it comes back, oh, we're, you know, we're pregnant. Then they go to a doctor and get a real blood test and at that point the doctor can confirm at that point if that's truly what is happening. ATG for a diet portion, a lot of doctors go with a 500 calorie restricted diet. With us here at Titan, it's a little bit different. Our doctors have a different protocol as far as that goes. Um, it could be a calorie restriction and a different dosage that you usually see on the internet. Um, a lot of different myths, like don't work out on HCG, don't eat fruit, such and such. Um, it's kind of false as far as our patients go and what our doctors have seen. Um, everybody has their own opinion as far as providers and doctors. Uh, ACG is a pro-hormone that stimulates other hormones in the body that actually keep the body in more of an anabolic effect than a catabolic effect when you're eating those calorie restricted days. Um, what happens is, is basically it stimulates those hormones and your hormones are, are taking in, you're being able to lose the weight. Now ACG itself does not make you lose weight. It's actual diet that makes you lose the weight. But the ACG injections, can change how you do lose the weight. 
they usually come from the stomach area and people usually lose pounds like that. If you go on a, a calorie restricted diet, obviously you think that your muscles are gonna break down and go into a catabolic state. Like I said with ATG, that's not the case. It will keep you in an anabolic state in your body to a certain extent. It will help you keep your muscle, retain the muscle, and lose fat in those areas. So that way you can fit in those, those clothes that you want. You want that perfect outfit. You want to keep that muscle and not look all skinny and weak. ACG is definitely the way to go. So if you have any questions, concerns, give us a call, 727-389-3220, or visit us on the net at titanmedicalcenter.com. What's up guys, I'm John. And I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. This segment we designed for couples out there to get the utmost out of their relationships, reignite those relationships possibly, and just get back to being better to each other, right? So there's a lot of different things that we cover every week for you guys. And we try to come up with really good topics that we've encountered or have helped us in our relationship develop to where it is today. And, you know, we've been through a lot of different things. So I started thinking about today. I'm like, you know, what are, what are a couple good subjects that we can really talk about? Sometimes we talk about tips and tricks. Or we talk about different therapies that can help you guys out in your relationships and stuff like that. But it's really, you know, there's some questions out there that you need to ask yourself. Or maybe you ask your partner. You know, and then you guys come together and maybe you come up with these answers together. You guys might have your own single answers. Mm -hmm. You know, you can share these with your partner too. And you guys just might take this up together and this challenge that you guys can both accomplish, right? So let's talk about some of these different things, some of these different questions. The first question is, what dreams do you have? Now, this is a really good question. Now you might have dreams coming up when you were a little kid and sometimes those dreams go aside as we grow as into adult. Uh, you know, you might have more more dreams or as you become an adult, you know, a dream or you job might have or to meet someone and then combine dreams. Right, right, right. You can still have those single dreams sometimes. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, is it can conflict with your relationship? And most of the times it's probably not, and your partner should probably support most of those dreams. But there might be some different things that you can only do as a single person too. So <laughs> let, let's take that in consideration. So these dreams, what are these dreams and what do they mean to you? So like you know, my dream was, listen, I want to grow up, I want to have a family, I want to be successful in business, you know, I want to have some kids, you know, I just want to have a pretty good life. And I think a lot of people have those dreams, right? And, uh, you know, at that point, like, since I've grown, you know, those dreams have pretty much stayed the same. I wanted my family, I want a successful business, I want to be healthy, I want to be strong, you know, but there could be certain body types you're looking to get into, certain jobs. Um, so that's really up to you. You know, what are these dreams? Or it could be a whole different thing as you as a, a couple together mm -hmm. and what your dream is together. Maybe, you know, buying that certain house, going on that different vacation, you know, accomplishing things together as a, a couple, right? So that's just some of the different things you guys can think about. And think about really what is your dream or what was your dream. And you can still accomplish these dreams, right? With your partner or by yourself. Yeah, it's never too late. It's never too late. So. Don't ever crap out on your dreams. Don't ever forget about those dreams, right? Those give you purpose. Those give you motivation. Those could be things that have um, chiseled you out or your character out as a person. Mm -hmm. So don't forget about those, all right? So the next one is, what do you have planned for the future? And this goes right along with dreams. Right, it's the same thing, kind of. Right? Yeah. Kind of, right? But the future, it could be your future along with your partner's future, because we're talking about couples here. Mm -hmm. So what does that future entail? Now. Over the years, you know, as you grow together as a couple, I think your future, your your goals will align more with what your partner is. Um, so you guys can stay together. You guys have the same goal, the same mission to accomplish this future together. So let me give you an example. So for me and Sharice, like our future was, all right, listen, you know, we wanted to make sure that our, our future is secure. So we started thinking now, right? about investments or you know what's going to secure us financially later mm -hmm. this was something for our future especially with everything going on now if Absolutely. we say what we were doing maybe five years ago versus what we're doing now impacted by this pandemic 
you know, it might change things. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. Things might change from year to year. Things might change in decades. You know, things might change in blocks. Something might come up and then it changes once again. Yeah. So it really just depends, you know. I mean, as long as your husband has a good life insurance policy, then we're all <laughs> set, right? <laughs> the wife too, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, you, I mean, you want to take your future serious and you want to take in consideration what your future holds. A lot of people are like, well, I don't want to plan for the future. I just worry about the seat of my pants, you know, and I, I might not, I might die tomorrow. I might get hit by a bus, so I got to live today like it's my last day. It's true, but. Well, listen, you want to live in that light for sure. You don't want to let opportunities pass. You don't want to live your best life, but you got to plan for the future because most likely you're going to be around a lot longer than you think you're going to be around. Yeah. So it's always good to plan for the future. And even if you're not going to be around, you want to plan for the future of your spouse, of your children, you want to make sure their future is secured. So for me, financial, you know, is, is what I'm looking for the future, like to secure financial stability, uh, to make sure my family's taken care of, even if I'm not here, which hopefully I am. But yeah, we don't <laughs> at that point, anywhere. if I'm gone, they're going to be taken care of. Their futures are going to be taken care of, and that's really one of the big important things to me, even today. Uh, you know, before that was, make sure my family's taken care of. But before my, my, my future, I was thinking, listen, you know, I, I want to travel like all around the world. You know, I want to do this in my future and stuff like that. But as time changes and as we grow older and as our goals together as a couple, um, they start evolving. That's when I want to secure the future for that. So your future plans might be a whole lot different. It might be, I'm going to move to California in five years. I'm going to become an actor. I'm going to, you know, do this. I'm going to do that. So it's really up to you to individualize about what you want to do for your future and for you as a couple, like what your future entails and what you guys are going to do. And you guys should have some sort of a plan, either written down or you guys discuss it in detail. Not just, you know, just going, you know, just talking about here, this and that. I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. No, you guys, if you guys want to set up the future, set goals to get and hit those future goals. Mm -hmm. right? Different milestones for you. Different milestones, for sure. So it brings me to my next question to you guys. You know, what is the biggest adventure in life to date that you have had? And this could be a wide range of different things, right? Well, I mean, definitely mine, I have to say. Okay. All right, because... Obviously, we think adventure, you think like an adventure, like a ride or something like outrageous. But in my specific scenario, when I was growing up, you know, my parents work a nine to five job. My dad actually worked three jobs, to be honest with you, just to make the ends meet. Mm -hmm. So we did not grow up, you know, super, super rich or anything like that. We just lived paycheck to paycheck. So when me and John had this company and we started it, I never thought like in a million years when we opened the company eight years ago that it would be what it is today. So in that eight years, I have eight years of adventure, all right? And this adventure includes learning new things, going through trials and tribulations, making mistakes, <laughs> learning from the mistakes, um, and then, you know, growing as not just a couple and, you know, husband, wife, team in um, just our relationship, but growing in a professional standpoint too. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that happened in those eight years that have made us who we are today. And that has been quite an adventure, I might say. I'd have to say so too. <laughs> I've done a lot of adventurous things in my life, right? But my biggest adventure I would have to say, and I agree with Sharice, is creating Titan Medical Center. And going into this, you know, where me and her are working together side by side, 24 seven, all day, riding together, talking together and creating this business. You know, it's a huge adventure, and let me tell you why. Because when you go on an adventure, sometimes there's risk. Well, with starting your own company and you having no other options, that's one of the biggest adventures I think I've ever been on. Yeah. Because nothing is guaranteed. Nothing was guaranteed. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say probability, everybody thought we were going to fail. Yeah, you majority. Know? From parents to friends, the people we didn't know. In the beginning, we really just didn't have a support team. We, the support we, we, team was each other. Right. We would push each other. You right. know, there might be a day that I'd wake up and I'm like, oh, man, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't want to. I'm just, I, you really, are you sure? I would ask him that probably, I don't know, maybe every like quarter I would ask him, like, are you sure? Are you, we're going to do this. This is what's coming next. We're going to do this. Are you sure about that? 
I don't know about that. I would be the, you know, negative Nancy. You know, I stay negative Nancy, and he's positive Polly, let's call him. But, you know, it's uh, it's good to have a team like that. So everybody's always looking, at least somebody's looking at the half cup full, and somebody's looking at the half cup empty. And you have a really good team if you can have both of those on the same um, voting board, per se. Right, right. So, you know, it's 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 been it's been a nice little trip. It's been a huge adventure. Uh, it's been a huge payoff. So at that point, you know, creating this seeing this, uh, our business, our medical practice thrive, patients around the country, our relationship has grown the exact same way. So we've grown even more together. And that's one thing I think going on an adventure together will help you guys along with was bonding. And this adventure could be anything. It doesn't anything. have to be a business. Yeah. It could be you guys going on a trip. You guys going to Yellowstone Park and camping out there and you guys having this big adventure of staying up, whatever it is. But there's always adventures out there for you guys to take advantage of. Now, having your biggest adventure to date, you might have one singly, right? Mm -hmm. But have one together with a couple, and you guys can always reminisce about these things, talk about these things, look back and think on these things. I'm like, wow, like, I, I can't believe it. what a journey this has been, or what an adventure this has been, and what a ride. Mm -hmm. So strap in, get ready. <laughs> and set your feet and your task for this adventure that's, together. That's not what you told me when you got me on the back of that four-wheeler in Cabo. He did not tell me to start. Oh, hold on tight. Yeah, okay, as I'm screaming in his ear, like, we have a child, we need to go back home, don't kill us. <laughs> now that was my biggest adventure. Oh, my God. If that was the biggest <laughs> adventure, watch out. <laughs> but, yeah, so these are just some questions to ask yourself, ask your partner, and you guys talk about. This, guy, this will set some different things up for you guys for your future, hopefully, in your endeavors or personal relationship, uh, children, all these different things. You guys need to set up for your future. Don't forget about your dreams. Don't put them on the wayside. Make sure your partner supports your dreams as long as it's applicable for both as a couple. Um, and make sure you guys have that adventure together. Have one of the biggest adventures in your whole life, whether it's traveling or, or doing something you guys have never done, whether it's skydiving or whatever it may be. You guys, make sure you guys have that adventure because you only have one life to live and you guys gotta make sure you guys are taking uh, full advantage of it, right? Because you guys are not gonna get a second chance. Mm -hmm. So these are just some of the tips and tricks that me and Sharice would like to throw out there for you guys. This is more of, you know, some, uh, some, some tips that, or some, some educational things, I guess, that me and Sharice have learned um, to, to grasp and to thank God for that we've had. So thank God for the adventure that we've had to date. Hopefully we'll have many more adventures, bigger than this one to date, but we'll see. Yep. So thanks, guys, for tuning in to another Cupid's Corner every Sunday on ABC at 11 a.m. You guys can also check out our Facebook our Instagram, Twitter. Make sure you guys check out the YouTube if you guys want to check out past episodes. They're all on there for you guys to check out. Make sure you guys hit that bell, all notifications. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we'll see you next week with another Cupid's Corner. Thanks, guys.